To review the Galaxy Z Flip 5, you have to change your habits. For so long now, we've been conditioned to use slab smartphones. A rectangle with a touch screen, and that is all you have to interact with. The Flip 5 changes that. This is my two months with the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Let's go. So the Galaxy Z Flip 5, it's a hard one to, to review. Especially for me, it's not my type of phone. I can appreciate the technology and I can understand what Samsung were achieving with this and I know who they're targeting with it. But I am not your typical Flip 5 user. I love Fold, I love S23 Ultra, Tab S9 Ultra. Big, large, the biggest you've got, I'll take it. That's why when I decided to get the Flip 5, I was really just looking at what I can do with it for my way of using phones. So with two months with it, I've tried to integrate it into my life so this review is not going to be your typical Flip 5 review. I'm not going to be looking at how people can use this as a phone. I'm going to show you how you can use this as a piece of technology that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. As usual, we are going to jump into categories. First, of course, is going to be the compact design and the displays that are on board because, of course, you have two of them. Then going to look at the camera experience and how I've integrated that into my life and what I've used the way you can use this camera for. I won't be talking about output because I think it's well known by now that the Flip 5, its hardware and its output isn't as good as your flagship territory. Then rather than looking at performance, I'm just going to look at the end at like usability and just fun things that this phone can do. The fun factor is what I'll call it. Because th this phone isn't really a phone that you use seriously. It's it's fun and it's a self-expression bundled up into this cute little package. Let's of course dive into design and the displays. So apart from being an incredibly delightful fidget spinner, the Z Flip 5 is a cute compact design that its whole purpose is to save you space in your pocket or bag. Now, what I really like about it is the fact that it's this cute little square that can easily just sort of fit in the palm of your hand when it's closed. And what I really like this year is Samsung has made that front display larger. Now, this is a little bit different to the concept of the Fold 5. The Fold 5 in my review, I said the whole purpose of that cover display is to for quick interactions, one-handed use. And it's giving you the option to unfold it into a bigger display. This has a slightly different approach. This isn't so much for interacting for long periods of time. This is more for a quick bite, a check of something. At least that's what it was when it started. Samsung making the display bigger has now opened up and expanded what you can do with the Flip 5's cover display. I'll talk a little bit about functionality and the fun factor of this cover display a little bit later on. But from a just practicality point of view, it's actually a really functional display in terms of to look at. Outdoors, it's super bright enough that when you are outside and you need to check something, you shouldn't have to worry about having to look over it or needing to unfold it to the bigger display because that's what this display is here for for those moments when you just want to check something quickly make sure you don't need to do anything extra and dismiss it so you can carry on it gives you that reason to continue being a normal human being outdoors and outside when you open it up the design is where you get more it's more familiar when it's open you've got a little bit of a taller narrower display which i've been quite used to having used the fold series for a number of years now but it is even taller than that it's a very very elongated aspect ratio it's hard to get used to so for that it may it does make the inner display a little bit harder to use i haven't had any issues though again with brightness or screen quality it looks superb on there and i really like what Samsung has done with the displays on the Flip 5 this year. Both of them work really nicely together. When it's closed, you've got this really nice shape that kind of fits in your hand. And Samsung's done a good job with the hinge. I have had this little bit of a wiggling issue. I don't know if anyone else has had it. You can kind of, I don't know what it is, but it's just a little bit of a wiggling issue that I've, that I've had with it. But that doesn't stop this hinge, really. It still can sort of stay up and hold itself at multiple different angles, and it's still quite strong, as you can see. Overall, with the design, I'm a fan of the shape of it when it's closed. It feels like a phone you want to be holding in your hand. It almost feels like a waste to put it in your pocket or your bag, because it fits so comfortably and natively in your palm that to put it away just seems like a crime. Next, into the camera experience. I'm gonna make a big bold claim here. This is the best B-roll camera if you are a YouTuber. Not in terms of output, 
because again the quality of it hasn't isn't substantial enough that you could replace the s22 ultra or the professional camera no but what it, what it lacks in its output, it makes up for in versatility. It's the best pocket portable camera you can have on you. I have used this multiple times as B-roll shots in my YouTube videos. You probably haven't even noticed. There's three features of the camera that make it so. The first is flex mode. Popping this phone into flex mode allows you to have that portable tripod experience. There is a slight problem though. Natively, the flex mode will be shooting in portrait orientation. Because of the way the camera sits, it's using the sensor in its tall aspect ratio instead of its wide one. Samsung has built a workaround though. In the camera software, you can change the aspect ratio when it's in this flex mode portrait orientation to be 16 by nine widescreen. There's a limit to the resolution. It limits it to full HD. Whether that's a problem for you, I don't know. Most of the time in this situation, I'm only filming something that's close-ish. So it's not necessarily needing to have extra resolution that I have to crop into later. The reason why it does this is because it's using the tall crop of the sensor and cropping into the middle part of it, which means it's not taking advantage of the full size of the sensor. And it's only giving you the full HD middle section, which I think is perfectly fine for what you're using it for and especially what I need it for. Having this allows me to set this up and get some really unique perspectives. I can put it next to my Tab S9 Ultra keyboard, for example, when I'm doing typing on it to showcase the keyboard and how that works. I can put this down when I'm hosting my trivia and capture some really nice perspectives of Samsung Dex being in action that I use to my Tab S9 Ultra review. I can use this to be able to capture stuff for my Fold 5 review. So many things that that has enabled and I really enjoy using it. The second is the camcorder way, which seems a little bit silly because you can just hold a normal phone, but something about gripping a phone like this is quite, quite satisfying. And I've used that a number of times as well. Similar to the Fold 5, it's really great for family situations, setting the phone down and capturing sort of moments around you again, without having to worry. And because the Flip 5 has the cover screen on the same side as the cameras, you can get that live preview when it's in flex mode. So you can frame everyone up and it's really handy for that. And I really do appreciate what that can do when you are taking a photo with your kids and with your family. And just in general, it doesn't even have to be your kids and family. I said I wasn't going to cover output and that's because that's not what the Flip 5 is about. It has the ultra wide, it has the main camera and look, they do okay. It's not going to be the world beating zoom of the S23 Ultra or the 50 megapixels that you can get from the Z Fold 5, but it is going to be enough for the person that wants to just capture content. Whether that be using flex mode to capture Instagram stories, which Instagram supports, whether that may video calling from the inside display and having a uh, Google Meet optimize itself for that flex mode. The cameras on this thing is more about the experience and the flexibility, pun intended, than it is what you get at the end result. And the last one here is the fun factor. The stuff that makes this phone really impossible to put down at times and really hard to ignore when you're deciding which phone to pick up off the desk. That sounds really annoying. I, I heard it myself, don't worry. I value what this offers from a portability fun factor. And a lot of it's to do with this cover display. Samsung has enabled through a lot of different um, hacks, I guess you could call them in good luck, the opportunity to turn this cover display into being able to launch anything that's on your phone. Whether that be browsing casually through mindless tweets that people are putting out or Instagram, you know, scrolling through Instagram from this cover display. Samsung has enabled it. It's all through good luck. It's not native. Natively, Samsung only enabled four or five different apps that you can launch. Some of them, I think they're all to do with partnerships that they have, Netflix, YouTube, messages, that sort of thing. Whereas good luck module allows you to do everything. Again, you probably wouldn't want to launch everything on here. It's really unnecessary. Most of the things you'd want to launch, just the things you would do on the inside display, but maybe aren't even worth unfolding for. Things like Twitter, because you can get lost in a Twitter scroll. Can't tell you how much what time I waste just scrolling. Whereas on the cover display, you would have that quick hit and then you're like, you know what? What do I need this for? And you can put it away. It gives you that, that feeling that that can happen. But of course, Samsung has also built in continuity. So if you do want to continue into the tweet, tweet that you're reading, or if you found a YouTube video, open it up and it goes straight into that section of the app that you were using. That's clever. The other part is the games. I must say, 
that using the games on the cover screen is a great way to kill time. Whether it be, let's face it, we all do this on the toilet, playing games on the toilet, no footage here of that. Whether that be in the car as a passenger and you're just trying to kill time while you're waiting for to get to your destination. It's a really great way of being able to just have fun. Some of the games aren't great, nor do they make a lot of sense, but most of them you'll have and enjoy. There's a golf one, which is infuriating. There's one that's like a stack crusher. I don't know how quite to call it. You just hold it down and it's very cathartic actually how it just calmly goes down the the stackers and that's quite fun again that's a good lock module that samsung has enabled so you can add functionality to this cover display the rest of the cover display is all about convenience and that's notifications that's having widgets and acts quick access to things that again stop you from needing to unfold your phone as much i also really like too that when you click on a notification on this cover display it actually can open that app on the cover display so like Instagram, for example, providing you've turned it on on the good lock module, just go straight into it and it'll open up that notification on the cover screen. Again, stopping you from needing to unfold. The other aspect about fun is the flex mode isn't just for the camera like I demonstrated earlier. It's all about convenience when you're watching content and experiencing content. That's again, another aspect of the Flip 5. You know, you can be sitting at your desk and you're watching a YouTube video. Yes, it's not the biggest screen that you'll be able to watch something on, but it's convenient. Because it turns itself into its own stand, you can have the content playing top half and the interaction can be done bottom half. Very, very easy to use and literally you don't have to turn anything on, you just half fold it. And YouTube in particular, knows what to do. You can activate this for other apps if you wish. In fact, you don't even have to turn it on. When you do activate flex mode, Samsung have built software right into it to be able to down the bottom, activate that bottom half. I really like using the trackpad, particularly for apps like Twitter. That leaves the top half for viewing and the bottom half for control and interaction. The Galaxy Z Flip 5. It's all about creating different habits and changing the behavior that you've used your phone. Because ultimately that's what this is. You know, I could tell you that the battery life isn't as strong as an S23 Ultra, but I think you knew that. I could tell you that 25 watt fast charging isn't enough for a flagship of 2023, but I think you knew that. What you need to know with a Flip 5 is that if you are to get one of these, you need to be ready to adapt how you use your phone. Change your mindset, change your behaviors. Because this is a phone that if you give it long enough, if you allow yourself to invest in the way it works, you will get yourself to a point where this is how you want to interact with a phone, not a flat slab smartphone. So that completes the set of me reviewing Samsung's Half 2 2023 flagships. Tabis 9 Ultra, Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, Fold 5, and finally the Flip 5. I'm sure that if you pick up one of these, you understand what you're in for. But what I will say is don't buy this phone if you are too comfortable with a straight slab smartphone. This is not meant for someone who's used to normal. This is for the unconventional. This is for the person who loves self-expression. Consider it, if that sounds like you. Thank you very much. Hopefully you've enjoyed my Flip 5 review. It's a little bit different to how I've been reviewing the other phones. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, go check out the other reviews of all the other products that I've put out there uh, in the last few weeks. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. I will. And make sure you come hang out with me on Twitter slash X as well, because that is where I like to put a lot of my thoughts. And also on Instagram, where we'll upload the casual photo taken with one of these flagship smartphones. That's it. See you in the next one. Yo!